Now let's go look at how all this kind of comes together in what's called the analysis of variance table. You've seen this before, I think, and we're going to build this bit by bit. There's actually two bits of information we already know because we calculated them right at the beginning of this example. We know the sum of squares within approaches. We know the total sum of squares. So let's put those in. Hey, we also know now, because we know the sum of squares total and the sum of squares error, we can calculate the sum of squares treatments. It's just going to be the total minus sum of squares error is going to equal the sum of squares treatment. And there it is, 1.4 times 10 to the 6. Let's move one column over and work on degrees of freedom. Now some rules of thumb will help you get through this pretty quickly and help you interpret ANOVA tables when you see them um, quickly. One of them is that the total degrees of freedom is your total number of samples minus 1. So here that's going to be 23. And the other one that's really quick to figure out is the degrees of freedom for your treatment. It's how many levels you have for your treatment. Again, minus 1. And in this case we had three levels. Email, by letter, by phone, minus one, it should be a two there. And it's not too hard to figure out the difference between 23 and two. It's gotta be 21 for our degrees of freedom for error. Because the treatment degrees of freedom plus the error degrees of freedom need to add up. So let's move one column over to mean square. The mean square, you see, we have the equation right here. It's the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. You can think about it as how much spread is there per degree of freedom, in a sense. So we're just going to divide 1.4 times 10 to the 6th by 2 and divide 1.5 times 10 to the 6th by 21. We do not calculate this for the total sum of squares. We don't calculate mean square total. Now we'll move over to the F statistic. We've already seen what this was earlier. There's only one box to fill in here because it's a ratio of these two numbers. It's this treatment mean square divided by the error mean square. And you should be familiar enough with F statistics to know that 9.4 is really big. So it shouldn't surprise you at all to see a really small p-value here for 9.4. This statistic makes a lot of sense. All it's saying is that the more spread there is between our different solicitation types, between our different treatments, compared to the amount of spread there is within our individual solicitation types, the more likely it is that the different solicitation types are having an impact. It's getting at the same idea as a t-test, which is that are the differences between the means big enough to overcome sort of the amount of spread within the means, but it's doing it a different way by looking at the spread between treatments and dividing that by the spread within individual treatments. So now the big question is, what do we know? We've done this big table, we have a, a low p-value. That must mean that we are rejecting the null hypothesis, but what does that actually mean? What well, help us figure that out, I'm going to turn to one of my favorite YouTube videos that answers this question. Hi, hey, do you want to play a game now? Okay, here, I help. One of these things is not like the other things. One of these things just doesn't belong. Can you guess which thing is not like the other thing? Before I finish my song. Now look closely. Look. Now something here. One of these things does not belong. So Cookie Monster said it pretty well. What do we know when we see a low p-value for analysis of variance table? It, we know that at least one of these things is not like the other one. So for our example here, we have the letter, email, and phone solicitation. With our low p-value, we know that at least one of those has a mean value for the amount of money collected from donors that is different from the rest. It could be that all three are different from each other. but We know that at least one is different from the other two. And that's the conclusion we can draw from analysis of variance. Well, to figure out which of the ones are different from each other, 
that's another video on post hoc tests like Tukey's me method. What we do have today is that we've gone into some details about how ANOVA works and what you can say from the result of analysis of variance. The key assumptions have to do with things called residuals that are calculated with analysis of variance that we're not covering in this video. What we have covered and what you should know now is how ANOVA works, a meaning of the values in the ANOVA table, and an understanding of the conclusions one can draw from an ANOVA table. Yet to do is learning how to run post hoc tests to help you figure out which mean or means are different from the rest and looking at how to check the assumptions of ANOVA.